Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Stratagoy video. Um, today, we're going to be, or maybe you're watching this at the same time as the, all the other videos we're recording in a row here, uh, covering the Skaven part of the faction focus that we apparently are going to be seeing for every weekday uh, between now and probably the announcement of the uh, pre-order, if not the actual release of, of fourth edition. So pretty excited about these. Um, we just covered Stormcast. We're doing them in order, of course, and every week, uh, as Jonas mentioned in the last video, every week we're going to be uh, rounding up the week with uh, what's been released. So I expect, Jonas, uh, that we're going to have five videos per week. Is that about right, you think? Yeah, probably. Wow. So lots of content to come. Um, and today, since uh, considering I am the Skaven player amongst the two of us, I will be, I guess, leading this session. Um, but uh, don't worry, Jonas will be covering, I'm sure, leading for Sylvaneth and Soulblight and some other things that he's passionate about, Seraphon. So we do know for a fact that Cities is the, the first one of next week's uh, videos, though, so I guess I'll be leading that one, too. Yeah, that's, but, I'm excited for Cities. Yeah. Um, Okay, so, and guys, don't forget to join us in the Discord and do all that great YouTube stuff. It really helps boost the signal for the channel. And uh, as always, we really appreciate you guys. All right, Jonas, you got the battle traits uh, pulled up here? I do. Ready? Awesome. So I, I, I would have to say, of the armies we've seen thus far, including, let's say, Lumineth, because we saw enough from the uh, the example game that they, they streamed, um, I would say that Skaven probably has the best buff that any army has gotten amongst those five or so. Yeah. Jonas, would you be on the same page with that? Have you read through Definitely. all these rules? Definitely. If I compare it to what it used to be before, there's so much more flexibility. You all, almost lose nothing. Yeah, it's it's relatively minimal. And considering that, like, spoiler alert for the Gits video, but the Gits felt very much like they just lost. Exactly. Um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> But I'm gonna I want to put that into context real quick because the Skaven book that came out in third edition has been repeatedly accused of just being a copy paste from the second edition book that didn't get a whole lot of love. Whereas the Git book got so big of a buff that they had to nerf <laughs> it like four or five times in a yeah. row. Yeah. And so this is maybe making up for lost time. Maybe GW knew that Skaven was going to be the launch box army for the next edition. And they're like, yeah, let's just kind of dial this one in for third edition. And then when fourth edition comes in, we're, we're going to really turn up the volume there. But anyway, um, so looking at the battle traits, um, every, a lot of this is centered around your gnaw holes, which we'll get to in, in a bit. But um Basically, the whole army can be set up in the tunnels below, which is a reserve type move. And they've, you, we've, we're seeing in fourth edition legalese that you can be set in reserve, and then that reserve has a keyword. And so anything that's in bold text, like it is here in the tunnels below, will be referred to again, say, on the ability to the right of the lurking venom tie, vermin tide. That's Nahol Ambush, says pick a friendly scaving unit that is in the tunnels below. And then you can set them up. Uh, in any amount of these, holier than six inches of a gnaw hole uh, during your movement phase. Um, we don't know 100% if that's going to be at the beginning, end, or just during, but it looks like during at this moment. Um, so basically, you could, in theory, set up your army off board, and then on turn one, deploy everything if they fit, holier than six inches of one gnaw hole. We're going to have to come back to that eventually when we look at the Nahol War Scroll, but there's some amount of un, not like lack of clarity around how many Nahols you get to set up on each battle round, which is the next ability. So we see the Splinters of the Vermin Doom. It says if you, there are fewer than three Nahols on the battlefield, you can use this. Now, that's kind of similar to the wording for the Sylvaneth trees that we saw in one of the articles about um, the Sylvaneth terrain. But it says you can set up a gnaw hole on the battlefield more than nine inches from all enemies, more than one inches from friendly units, and more than three from all objectives and other terrain features, which is way more flexible than it used to be because at the beginning of the game, in third edition, you set up all your gnaw holes outside of 18 from each other, but wholly than eight inches of board edges, uh, and then also outside of uh, three of terrain features and such. Now, that meant your, your gnaw holes were already on the field, but they were coming in... Um, kind of on the sides, which is totally fine. Um, but now you can set them anywhere you like on the battle. If they're far enough away from the objectives and terrain and our, well, uh, the enemy units mainly. 
Problem is, they you can destroy these things much more easily, which we'll get to when we look at their war scroll. But um, you only, from the wording of this, it seems like you only get to put one up each battle round. Yeah. And unlike the Sylvaneth army, there's no spell that we've seen that says you can keep summoning gnaw holes. And so the problem is, if you watched the video of the playback of, of them playing Skaven versus Lumineth, there were actually two gnaw holes on the, uh, at the beginning of the game. Because evidently there's a terrain rule we haven't seen, maybe, that says that all armies with terrain features get to set up one terrain feature at the beginning. And then the guy proceeded to put another one down at the beginning of the first battle round. So yep. maybe you start with two. Mm-hmm. And that's that's kind of what I mean when I say, we we without having seen all the legalese of the core rules, we don't really know exactly how it works. We're assuming based off of that example. But of course, it's also possible that they got it wrong. Um, what do you think about that, Jonas? Yeah, I, I really like it. It's uh, it's very flavorful. If you've played uh, Vermintide on uh, you know on Steam or something, uh, the the en- endless waves of Skaven is it's really been um, you know reinforced here by this rule, and I really love how they approach that with the fact that you just you can't really stop it either. It's not a spell or an ability that you could basically that you can interact with. So it's just it happens, and you're kind of you'll have to suffer through it as an opponent i kind of dread the fact that it can go anywhere because it's just a continuous wave of stuff and i wouldn't mind as much if it if there wasn't that much as much recursion in skaven as there apparently uh appears to be so i do think it's gonna be a menace on the board and i love for skaven players to have these tools now because it's basically a um you know a buffed up version of the stormcast deep strikes yeah, imagine though that you're pl- like the Skaven opponent is a shooting army. All they got to do is remove seven, or was it seven or six wounds worth on a light save uh, of to get rid of that gnaw hole. And thus far, we only can bring in, let's say, two at the beginning of the game plus one for each of the following four battle rounds. Mm-hmm. So, and the problem is priority is going to be a big thing here. Say that you set some of your important units in reserve. Now, we we still don't know if there's a restriction on reserve units that they have to come in within the first three turns of the game. I have a feeling from some of the wording that we've seen that it's actually going to be more flexible than that, that you can bring them in whenever you like. And the objectives are smaller, so it's easier to block them off. So maybe that's, that's also uh, one of the trade-offs there. Um, but the... Imagine that you set too much of your stuff in deep strike and in reserve, and then you, at the beginning of the battle round, put your thing on the table, but you don't have control over priority. So you put your thing on the table, they have enough shooting to just shoot it off, and they keep shooting them off as you put them up, and then you, your army just sits in reserve and you never get to be on the table. Yeah. So as much as that might be a tempting thing, and Skaven armies tend, tended in 3rd edition and earlier to be high drop armies, it really kind of, if you're going to be the kind of person that wants to put everything in deep strike or in reserve, you need to probably control priority so you have some control over getting to go first on some turns to be able to ensure that your units get put on the table. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, that's that's kind of in the weeds, and we have to see how other things interact. There could be ways to generate more gnaw holes. There could be ways to heal them. Um, who knows? The sky's the limit right now, especially once their battle tome comes out and we get more fleshed out rules than just the index. Yeah. So the other two big abilities are that no mortal damage is inflicted on Skaven infantry and cavalry by retreat abilities. Important distinction here that, of course, if your Hell Pit Abomination or your War Machines or your um, uh, Vermin Lords retreat, then, well, sorry, or your Thankful, even if he's assuming he's still a monster, they do take mortal damage. So it's not the whole army, um, but it is helping them get around that problem. Um, and then the other ability is three co- always three claw steps ahead. So and good. <laughs> secretly, I think is the best ability. Yes. Um, again, it doesn't work for monsters, but basically, as long as you're not in combat at the end of your enemy's hero phase, um, is it? Does it say end? Nope. No, we don't know. It just says once per turn enemy hero phase. Yeah, but, but the I way- do. I do seem to recall in the gen- in the the rules previews that there was something about. Uh, opponents doing all of their command stuff or all, all of their abilities at the end unless yeah, it was a reaction be. yeah it, it could it could be because in the 
playback of the, the the game they played, he seemed to want to do this at the end of the turn. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's what it is. But I mean, why wouldn't you wait, right? Sure. Um, unless, of course, you want to block something off, keep them yeah. from getting on the objective. Yeah. But yeah, let's assume it's at the end until we know more. But uh, it's still amazing because you're getting that extra distance on stuff. And this is an ability we didn't used to have. Um, yeah. So all in all, these battle traits are great. What we're losing is basically the clan battle traits, which basically said if you had usually three or more of the representatives, uh, hero representatives from a given clan, like Verminous or Master Clan or uh, Pestilence, that you got some kind of benefit. Um, we don't see any indication of that right now, but who's to say that doesn't make its way onto War Scrolls in some way or the other? Yeah, I mean, uh, it has already in some way. The like the Scryer sub faction, you mean? Yeah, I mean, there's um, the one that buffs all the sub factions. Sure, you mean the, just the formations? No, um, we'll get it. We'll get to him in oh. a minute. The the big guy. Okay, so let's scroll on maybe yeah. and look at that. So we've already seen by a leak a Scryer version. There are four sub factions. They've already told us what they're going to be. I keep calling them sub factions, but they're formations. Um, we, we're getting one for Pestilence, Scryer, Verminous, and this one, which is Molder, um, which is cool. It means Eshin didn't get one and Master Clan didn't get one, but Master Clan doesn't have any units other than heroes. Um, so anyway, they basically seem to work this way, where you pick three units, uh, in this case, non-hero Molder units. This once per turn in your hero phase, once per battle round, we should say. Um, and then you roll a dice. The Scryer ability is only bad on a one, and then a two plus is... is better uh this one's on one and two it inflicts d3 mortal damage on the target very skaven trying to do some damage against yeah. your guys this reward but then on a three to four you add one to the attacks characteristic of their melee weapons and then on a five to six you get that effect plus a five plus ward and that's how it works for scryer as well i believe it was plus one to wound and then it also gave another buff i forget what maybe it was also a ward. i'm forgetting off the top of my head oh it was extra rent that's what it was um, so anyway, cool. And maybe the verminous ones are going to work similarly. That said, we don't have a whole lot of verminous units. It's basically just, um, uh, claw lords, the, uh, uh the equivalent vermin lord, uh, the clan rats and storm vermin, but maybe we'll, we'll get some new stuff. Who knows? And then, uh, and then pestilence of course is going to be all of the plague stuff, which I'm actually really excited about. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about this rule? Do you feel like that's something that that you'd want on your armies to be able to add it's, one it's to it. Super cool! I love this for Skaven. I like this uh, three friendly uh, non-hero Molar units, and all the Molar units are pretty awesome, as far as I've seen. Um, the only downside I think that I see, apart from obviously the cell destructive fury, is that it has to happen in your hero phase and not a hero phase. Sure. So, but the, it lasts. Yeah. Yeah, until the start of your next turn. That's that's fair. But just you know, how how strong is a the five plus ward if you're not taking initiative for example fair enough uh but that's always been a problem with buffs that happen in your hero phase yeah. as long and if you get double turned it you get double the bonus so uh you know uh it it, it depends and, and the fact that you roll separately for each course is good keep mm -hmm. in mind that storm storm fiends the the, sh the mixed arms shooty and good in combat guys that are bigger than rat ogres or whatever uh they are also molder they're getting to benefit from this. Yeah. They always were Molder, but they never got to benefit from the Molder ability. So they could be actually a pretty big menace, although sh the shooting half of the unit wouldn't. So, But the, f the five plus ward is fantastic. Yeah, so. I agree. I think we're seeing the Storm Fiend uh, War Scroll in a bit, right? Um, no, we're seeing... Well, that that was a leaked War Scroll. We're seeing oh, okay. the, uh, the Rat Ogres. Yeah, the Rat Ogres. Okay. Uh, onto the Warp Lightning Vortex, a uh, army favorite, but not not per se for the Skaven army. <laughs> oh, okay. continue. I'd like to hear what you were about to say. I mean, this used to be, I back in the day when I knew nothing about KO, I only knew that they always brought the Warp Lightning Vortex back in the day. I, I 100 percent right, and I my KO army paint. I, I had a Warp Lightning Vortex. And at the time that I had that list is when I started painting my army because I'd had it for a while. And I was like, okay, well, now I'm actually going to take it to a tournament with a Warp Lightning Vortex. And I thought my either gold is going to be Warp Lightning. My, my KO are guys who think that they're using either <laughs> gold, but they're actually using Warp Lightning. Uh -huh. And so anyway, that's stuck with my army ever since. So my KO army is like secretly a Skaven army as well. 
Um, but uh, of course, when the third edition Battle Tome for KO came out, they couldn't take uh, any endless spells. They could only take the generic one. Yeah, I mean, with um, all sky suits going on in KO, you don't actually know who's beneath those sky suits, right? Could be Skaven. <laughs> I, I, yes, I, actually, that's a great that's a great new project for me to make. Is like like Vince Venturella does uh, this rat cast storm cast that are rats. Yeah. I should do a rat rat overlords or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is the first time, if I'm not mistaken, that we've seen a manifestation a manifestation lore's summoning war scroll combined with its actual war scroll. Mm -hmm. We've seen, as you saw with the Lumineth in the pre uh, the, the leaks from the video. We saw all of this part that we're on the screen looking at right now, the summoning part, but that's not that interesting, right? It just tells you the range and um, what its casting value is. Um, but now we get to see both. Now, the cool thing about the Warp Lightning Vortex is it says it has an 18-inch range, but that's just within. So that means that first piece you set up is one millimeter within 18-inch, but it's on like a base that's about a 40-millimeter base. So... Then that means that the end of the, the the first piece you set up is is 18 inches plus uh, 40 millimeters, yeah. and then you're, and then you're setting up the other two parts within seven inches of it. And then when we look at the war scroll itself, it has a six inch effect range, <laughs> which means you're getting basically uh, 18 inches plus 40 millimeters plus seven inches, but then accounting for the triangle effect, the, the hypotenuse, and then you're getting six inches, which is even bigger than people have been saying if they just add the, the numbers on paper together because the bases add to the length. Um, and so as we see here, this is our first example that has a same as its banishment value, but I'm really hoping, uh, you guys mentioned in your Lumineth video that the, the shrine, or no, sorry, not shrine Luminar, for, uh, the, the sanctum, has a low casting value, but I have a very strong feeling that it's going to have a higher banishment value. Yeah. Um, and uh, the assumption from third edition is that they're the same thing. Um, now, technically what this means, if the casting value is seven and the banishment value is seven, that actually means that the banishing is easier than it used to be because it used to be that you had to beat the casting value and now it's just the same thing. Um, so it's actually a little easier to get rid of than it would have formerly been, but it used to be a casting value eight. So it's extra easy to get rid of now compared to that. Yeah. And basically you set it up. It's a static endless spell instead of a moving, like uh, I guess predatory kind of version. And it doesn't trigger its main thing. It does on the first turn, but because you set it up in your hero phase and it triggers in a, the following hero phase, then it will trigger uh, before they get a chance to move away from it. Uh, uh, assuming that they haven't used redeploy or haven't used uh, counter charge or power through or something. So basically every unit that's within six inches of it gets hit on a four plus with D3 mortal damage. And then its passive ability is minusing, subtracting two from run, excuse me, run and charge rolls for all enemy units. By the way, this only affects enemy units. It used to affect your own units uh, within six inches of it. And if they happen to pass across the manifestation, it inflicts D3 mortal damage. Now. It makes a triangle, and it. I don't think the wording here means that if you pass through the triangle, you you inflict you suffer damage. I no. think it just means if you pass across the model, yeah. which means you can just walk around it. Why would you walk over it? I, I think that's kind of a moot point, unless you absolutely have to walk across it. Yeah, I don't actually think that's that's um, that's not. It, I don't think it's super unlikely that they would move over it because, especially if you set it up more defensively than proactively. Um, you're probably setting it up as a sort of defense buff, defense thingy against chargers. And if you're already losing two inches on your charge rolls, uh, you probably don't want to walk around it either, right? It, it, it just depends on how, how flexibly you can set it up and yep. where they want to go. Yep. Um, and I'm assuming flying counts as passing across it too, right? But probably. There's a, there's a version of reality where you think, oh, well, they didn't touch it because they flew over it. But I'm sure it probably counts. So, do you have any other thoughts about this thing? Do you feel like it's strong? I mean, it comes for free with your manifestation. Yeah, that, that's that's that, that was going to be my point. It's not amazing, but if you get it for free, why the hell not, right? Sure, and it's really a question of what the other two gave yeah. uh, in the spells bring. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so our first real spell was Lord Screech, and for anyone that's had to, the misfortune of having to play my four Warp Lightning Cannons list lately, I am a huge Lord Screech fanboy. 
And I remain a Lord Screech fanboy, although certain things got nerfed and certain things got buffed. Um, in short, uh, the, the big changes are he's a war master and he has all of the clans keywords, which is really nice because the way they separated his rule on the right there, the 13 headed one is by the clan. So once per, per battle round, there are six different clans. He chooses five of these per game. Let's say once per battle round, you choose one of these and you can't use it twice. And we have in it and now it affects not only him, but everyone within this holy Skaven number of 13 inches, uh, holy than uh, his model. And he's on a decent sized base, right? Yeah. So he's got plus one to cast. He's got plus one to charge for verminous. So I should say plus one to cast is for master clan, which is a lot of the wizards in the army. Um, Scryer is plus one to hit, which does actually positively impact my new warp lightning cannons, as we'll see. <laughs> um, I actually think that's one of the better ones on this list. Especially considering that Scryer, uh, Skaven's probably one of the best shooting armies now. Um, not that it wasn't be- good with shooting, but I-, I think it might be one of its main things now. Yeah. And then plus one to rend, which counts for him as well. But for Eshin units, we have no idea what the Eshin are going to do. But my theory, considering that they don't have a formation, is that the- in the book, they will get a new relaunch of all the Eshin range. Um, plus one to chanting for Pestilence Priests, which is nice, uh, especially if they don't lose their ability to buff each other and within a certain range, but I have a feeling they will. So maybe it's just making up for that. And then healing all Molder units, which we'll also see if you've seen the, the leaked version of the Master Molder. They have a lot of healing going on. So um, it's really cool. He was downgraded to one level wizard. Um, his attack profile is insane. I actually it did is, some. It's like, really crazy. <laughs> crit, I know crit two hits doesn't seem like a lot. It's but amazing. If you hold, it, it functionally, mathematically works out to plus one to hit. But if you all out attack the guy and you do this, he's hitting in principle all the time. So you're getting seven through most of the time. Yeah. And then three damage does a lot more work than you would think. I actually rolled one time that did 33 wounds after a four against a four up save, which you sh- you wouldn't think something like this could do. But and he's we've seen the warp um, the vermin lord warp seer, which is the magic y one via the uh, the game that was played online. Yeah. And his attack profile, Screech's attack profile is way better. Um, right. He's also. So. Uh, yeah, because he's like he's all he's all the vermin clans, uh, you know, kind of. A composite in yeah. one so, so anyway. this, this guy was a watch that i was talking about ryan where there's a buff for all for all the uh clans yes and it's i i agree uh, it's actually it feels a little bit like the current fire slayers runes where you have to yeah. choose which turn you're going to pull each one off mm-hmm. and what what your timing is um which one would you say is the strongest like the top two three for you i really think uh scryer jumps out at me at me for you know just based on the war school that I've seen so far. And then Eshin is probably the, the second one, depending on how good the Eshin stuff is going to be. But aside from what, what the Scryer and Eshin war schools are actually going to end up uh, being, just flat out in, in general, I would always love plus one to shooting attacks more than most other stuff that I see here. Yeah, I, I, I still think that's probably the best one. Yeah. Um, the verminous I'm questionable about plus one to charge is is kind of a mm, all right you know yeah. it depends on how much verminous it's mostly your chaff is the problem. I actually don't really like the molar one. It depends on how how much you're trying to resurrect them. I yeah they yeah I agree with you. I, I agree with you. It, it feels a little weak sauce compared to the others because it's not aggressive and Skaven's more about being aggressive than defensive. Yeah, and the thing is, can you actually resurrect them or is it just healing? Well, this is just healing, but I mean, there's other ways to bring back molder units, yeah. or at least they're traditionally have been. I just feel like so. a, a lot of molder stuff that we've seen so far has some healing built in already, and then there's obviously the heroes that can heal as well. So it just feels like m- almost too much of a good thing. Yeah, but here's the thing: is your your storm fiends, which we also mentioned, have both the molder and uh, scryer keywords. Oh yeah. So. You can you can make them go off on their hit rolls for shooting, and then if they take some damage in combat, you can buff them up, uh, heal them back up. Yeah. Which I mean, there's some value there. Yeah. True. Um, his war scroll spell is nerfed from what it used to be. It was it used to be casting value eight, so it's easier to cast. Um, but you rolled thirteen dice, and it was for each four plus instead of a five plus, and it did one mortal wound 
uh, for each four plus and made a new unit of clan rats uh, equivalent to the number of war- mortal wounds caused, not suffered. So before ward saves. Um, but now it's just returning them to your clan rats units, which is a lot less utilitous as far as I'm concerned, because creating a new unit that can go off and do its own thing in another corner, go take an objective is way stronger. And obviously it was going off on a four, but I still think it's a great spell. Um, it's still doing a decent amount of mortal wounds and can spike pretty hard. The value of the clan rats being brought back, it really depends on how much, how many wounds you've taken on your clan rats and if they even stayed on the table after absorbing an attack from your opponent. Um, and then his, he's also got a super roar, but in contrast to Krondis, um, he's uh, subtracting something from the control score of your opponent's unit, the, u- the unit he roars, instead of not letting your Stormcast unit get subtracted. That was what, that's what uh, Krondis did, right? And, and this all also only targets infantry units, while I think with Krondis it could be any units. Or maybe, I, yeah, was, or was that Indrasta that didn't let it get reduced? That was Indrasta, so I'm forgetting what Krondis did. But yes. Um, Krondis yeah, was, yeah. was the normal roar, basically, the one that we have yeah. now. I thought it had another effect, but maybe I'm, maybe no. I'm forgetting. No. Okay. Okay. So anyway, uh, yes, only targeting infantry units is a problem. Roar doesn't exist in the game anymore. So the fact that he has even a version of Roar is still good. Yeah. Right? Or no? Do you feel otherwise? No, no, I agree. Um, I, I'm not actually sure what I think about all the rampaging stuff because it, it takes up a, a place on your war scroll. So apparently it's it's pretty important, but there's not that many chances that you actually get to use them. While with monstrous actions, it, it was just like a free thing you got. And now I do feel like, okay, so it's taking up one of the abilities that otherwise you could also have gotten. But that's maybe my Nagash Rampage feeling that I have about um, the Hand of Dust. Sure. If they have generic Rampages, does that change your opinion on this? That you could choose this or a generic one? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So we don't know that for a fact. No one said we don't have Rampage. But uh, Nagash is with the, was at the end of the turn, and this is in, uh, in a combat phase, yeah. right? So yeah. we, we know for a fact they're, not at, they're at least not bound to the charge phase. Mm-hmm. They previously were. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything else to say about Screech? No, I just think he's really amazing. His his melee profile in itself is is baller. <laughs> it's really good. It's 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 shockingly good. If you spike, which is a Skaven thing, you want to people so who like spiking and having high variance, yeah. he can actually do a shit ton of damage. So uh, I wouldn't sleep on him. Yeah, but I really depends. wonder how they're gonna cost this guy. The the problem is, I assume that in that game that we saw on. Both of the players were given the full rules, and they still chose the list they had. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, why he chose the Warp Seer? I've seen the Warp Seer's War Scroll. I don't think he's better than Screech. Maybe it was a points thing, or maybe it had something to do with his um, his list tech. But like, usually they're roughly around the same points. All the Vermin Lord. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what the others do, um, and I hope they differentiate them a bit. Uh, but anyway, I'm I'm super psyched about Screech. Mm-hmm. Okay, Red Ogres. Oh, yes, I don't have too much to say about these guys. Me neither. Um, <laughs> I, the models are great. I'm glad they exist, yeah. and now I can actually commit to buying them um, because the other ones were obviously horrible. Um, they lost two health, if I'm not mistaken, and their save got worse, so they're more glass cannony. But you get three in a unit instead of two, and one of those three guys instead of one of every two has the incredible warp fire gun 2d6 attacks two, two, uh, 2 plus 4 plus minus 2 1 and can shoot in combat like if you took a, a reinforced unit of these guys 46 attacks at twos fours minus 2 1 yeah pretty good um they're not scryer units even though they have a shooting uh, um profile so they're not benefiting from that plus one to hit uh scryer ability but they they do have the molder ability for plus one attack in combat and they can give themselves plus one attack which means they can get up to seven attacks at least on fours, threes, minus one, two. And uh, obviously range is not a problem anymore for these guys, like three inch range. So you take a big unit of six of them, you're getting seven attacks times six, 42 attacks. So you all attack them at threes, threes, minus one, two. Um, can't complain, right? I mean, that's going to rip through something. Yeah. Um, they're, just they generically, kind of- they're, they're just generically good. Like they're, they're not a standout unit for me, but they're fine. 
and I think they'll they'll do they'll do what they need to do. Yeah, it depends on what the other buff units. I don't know if we still have pack masters. Um, I know they got. I think they got discontinued, but I don't know if they're going to make new ones. And we've got the master molder still. So, but I, I, if I seem to remember correctly, he only like buffed their charging and running. Yeah. It wasn't like it maybe healed them. It wasn't like an amazing buff on these guys. So we'll have to see what what that looks like. But we've seen their battle formation already, and we know what it does. And that's the most you can expect of these guys, I think. Um, unless there's some kind of command trait or I guess that's heroic trait or artifact that really buffs them. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm still cool with it. It's a good profile. It, they're just glass cannony. Yep. Okay. Uh, Warp lightning cannon. Um, yeah. I am. I don't know if there's another person that's as passionate about <laughs> Warp lightning cannon on this planet as I am. I have four of them and I've been running a that I've, I have only played Skaven with Warp lightning cannons, by the way. Um, I've literally never played a game of Skaven without Warp Lightning Cannons. I am, I love this unit. And I sent you a text, actually, after I saw this War Scroll that I was bummed out. And the reason I'm bummed out is not because their attack profile is now 2d6 attacks instead of what it used to do on a 4 plus to hit. What it used to do is you rolled a power level on a d6, and you could choose either to overload it or not. But let's say you didn't overload it. You rolled six dice, and then... You, after, after like after you saw the power level, let's say you rolled a three, then that was the target number you needed to hit to do more that many mortal wounds. So if you rolled six dice and you know two thirds of them were three ups, then you did four mortal wounds. You could also choose to overcharge it for twelve dice instead of six, and um, every one you rolled would would uh, do d three mortal wounds back to you. So that's Skaven risk reward. It's almost always worth it, um, especially if you have healing in your list, which I always do. Um, so you could, if you rolled a one, unlike normal uh, Games Workshop rules, ones are not fails in that case. Ones are auto successes. You'd still have to roll the 12 dice to see how many mortal wounds you took back on ones, but you would do 12 mortal wounds automatically, which is amazing for a unit that's now 130 points per model. Um, that said... Um, what they've now done is that you can only overload it. If you look at turn army, your shooting phase for the overloading rule on the right-hand side. Um, and it takes 2d6 attacks up to 2d6 plus 6 attacks, which on average is 13 and a half attacks. Um, no, 13 attacks. And then um, with the 4 plus to hit, you're looking at doing an average of 6 and a half mortal wounds or mortal damage. Uh, still with the same penalty if you roll 1s. Um, obviously, if you use like Screech's ability to give three of these cannons plus one to hit, then that goes up three ups, and then you're doing two thirds of your dam uh, of your dice rolls are doing mortal wounds. I did some test rolls of this, and it, it still does pretty well. Problem is, only one cannon can take this ability, and I have a list of four. So I'm sitting here thinking, do I need to maybe only take one, and then one of the new warp rattling gun, whatever warp blaster. Uh, and then a bunch of Gisales. Maybe that's the better version of this list, mm. but it's less fun because I liked taking the maximum amount. And, and keep in mind, at the current points cost, the maximum amount, you can only take four artillery pieces. These are artillery in the current 3.0 rules. You can only take four of them, and that was, I think, 520 points. So you weren't... Usually with a spam list, you're investing your whole yeah. army into, say, 10, 11 dragons. And Stormcast, but with this, I was only investing a quarter of my army um, into Warp Lightning Cannons, and then I had plenty of other things going on, like Screech and Screens and Pestilence stuff. It was actually really fun. Um, now I, I question whether you you really want to bring four of these things, and um, maybe, but probably you want to bring a more mixed arms list, and we were talking about this in the chat, that this kind of meme list, even though it wasn't oppressive, it was because I could blow myself up as fast as I could blow someone else up, um, if, if not faster. Um, at the same time, just isn't what GW is shooting for anymore. So this brings us to the topic of like, is spam a good thing or not? And they seem to be uh, on the same page as soup is out and uh, spam is out. Um, what are your thoughts, Jonas? Yeah, the, the fact that it's only once per turn really neuters it. I, I got to agree with you there. I didn't really see it before because I just quickly looked at the scroll on my on my phone. I was like, sure, it's not it's not as um, as swingy bef as it was before. So you have your smaller high rolls, I guess, but it still seemed 
pretty strong to me, but I can see why you're a little bit bummed because one cannon is going to do at least as well as it was before, but that's just the one cannon and you then you're sitting there with the, the three other ones. Yeah, I mean, I think two might be the way I would go because at least if one dies and you blow it up, you can... You, you still have a backup option. Hmm. I don't know if 2d6, uh, 2d6 attacks. Keep, keep in mind, without the plus six, say you rolled the worst possible roll, which is one and one, so two, um, you go with the overloading, you go from two dice rolled to eight, which is a huge difference. That's one mortal wound to four mortal wounds. Um, it's a, a four times improvement. Um, and so not being able to overload it is, is definitely de- like frustrating but at the same time i really like the new cannons almost guys and so a mixed arms list of shooting stuff is still going to feel oppressive to people that hate shooting lists um so i my apologies in my sorry for that my apologies in advance for people that are that are bringing a um that that, that hate shooting lists but i do think skaven's on its way to becoming one of the most feel baddy shooting armies maybe worse than ko from the leaks i've seen of ko thus far yeah i'm not looking forward to it at all <laughs> so we're almost done we got the gnaw hole to and we basically already said all this um so it has six health four up save so it's relatively easy to kill if you have no rend all you have to do is make 12 successful on average 12 successful hit and wound rolls go through and it's gone yep. um but um, it's it's obviously got more benefits than it, it used to have. It does give cover, as we see as the terrain feature here. Um, it's got the volatile ground rule, which uh, says that you can't pass through it, but you can you can pass through it, but you can't end on it. And if an enemy passes through it on a two up, it suffers D three more wounds, which actually I think is stronger than the passing through the warp lightning vortex endless spell is, mm-hmm. because they will try to pass through this. Some people have talked about using it as a screen or chaff. When you bring it onto the table, say you don't need to bring anything on anymore. You just bring it onto the table so that they have a, a thing that they have to kill before they can get to you. Yeah, cool. And then you've got the, um, your movement phase is um, when you can teleport. This is the, the building in the upper right-hand corner. You can teleport through it just like you used to be able to. And I assume that's per each gnaw hole as it always was. But of course... I'm I'm questioning now how often you're actually going to have three gnaw holes on the table. Yeah, I think not, well, it's not often. Against maybe a list that doesn't have any shooting and you put them far on the sides like you used to, they're just going to ignore them. But a, a list that has shooting is probably going to remove these pretty pretty quick. Mm-hmm. If you were as a Lumineth player, would you take these out first? Depends on the list. Assuming you've got some amount of wind chargers that can hit them with their fast movement and they're moving away. And then like, yeah, uh, at least I, I mean, it more depends on their list. Ah, okay. I, I don't necessarily mind them, uh, appearing everywhere because there's really no way for me to stop them. Um, doing so, I think I, I'd be more scared of these when it, when, uh, they brought a lot of ranged units. Uh, that's, that's a thing. Yeah. Because they might deep strike them. You mean? I just don't really want ranged units ending up on all good sides of the battlefield and then still be useful as well because there are, there are ranged units on top of that. Interesting, yeah. I've always used my ranged stuff as more of like um like a castle kind of thing. So I always think of them needing to come around to all your buff pieces. But I see what you mean. If something's got enough range and you set them up in all, all kinds of different places yeah. on the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, especially with the Endless Vermintide, which is so strong. Yeah. Yeah, so that rule is basically just the old Gitz rule, the current Gitz rule, that you bring back a a, a, a Skaven infantry unit. Keep in mind, I don't remember, but I don't know if the um, the Giselles have the infantry keyword. They might, actually. They used to be artillery. But in any case, um, it's not bringing back warp lightning cannons or warp blasters. Um, it's bringing back half that size of the unit and wholly than six inches of gnaw hole outside of three of enemy units. Three is pretty big. Yeah. That's the same, that's the same as the gets, but it is a command ability and it's the end of your turn. So the Skaven player's turn. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really great rule, but then again, the, the gnaw holes have to survive. And that's my biggest concern with the gnaw hole is that they're just too easy to take out. Um, it sure, does maybe. You're going to th- add a gnaw hole. Oh yeah. It started a battle round. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, and it does make me think that people are going to start leaning into more shooting armies. Mm. I think shooting has, from what we've seen thus far, at least with Skaven, shooting is not off the menu. You oh, know? no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. But it, you can't shoot in combat with most shooting units, so that is definitely a change, but this doesn't need you to be in combat to shoot it off the table. Mm -hmm. And if, you're, if your shooting unit is outside a range of anything valuable, say you had to choose between a screen which sometimes shooting off a screen is bad for hitting charges, right? There's always a trade-off there. You think, well, if I shoot off the screen, maybe my melee unit's not even going to get anywhere near a charge, and they're just going to be useless. So instead, you shoot the, the terrain piece, and then it's gone. You know, we haven't, We've yet to see what the Shrine Luminor's uh, save value is and what its wounds characteristic is, but six on a four-up save with no ward is not good. Yeah, no. Um, so... Um, yeah, the shrine is going to be way better though because there's no recursion and there's only one of one of it. Yeah, and if it's anything like the Git Shrine, foreshadowing for the next video, yeah. uh, it's, it's going to have quite a lot of wounds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, that's all I got to say, really. I mean, we could uh, real quick at the Gracier War Scroll, but honestly, not that impressed with it. Um, no, it's kind of bland. Yeah, I mean, if we look at like the, what the Gracier's current version is, like they, we've seen a leak of this too. Um, it's maybe a little bit better, but not enough better that I would say you need to like be like stocking up on Graciers. And the funny thing is they're re-releasing this model, which as I said in one of my videos, I didn't feel like it was actually necessary. No, the current Gr Gracier model is amazing. Yeah, it's totally fine. Yeah. Like if I'm, I'm really quickly looking at the, the actual, the big difference here is uh, he has n the the AOS full version doesn't doesn't do anything with the control score. He has a version of his old like extra D six when you cast thing, and that's it. Like he also doesn't have a wither, which is probably a, a lore spell. Um, and I don't know if he's a one caster or a two caster because the leak didn't put the keywords down below. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he's just a guy. Um, you I mean, need if, he's, if he's cheap and he costs like 80 points or or even 100 points, that would be fine. I think more interestingly is seeing what he's like on the Screaming Bell. That's the real oh, yeah. question. So, but we don't know. Yeah. So that's that's all I got to say about Gits. You know, um, Jonas, do you have anything else you want to add to the Gits? Or sorry, Gits, Skaven conversation. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit scared, to be honest. I'm uh, I'm happy I could see Nicola doing well enough that he could keep up with uh, the Skaven stuff. But uh, yeah, they seem very strong and they, they seem to have tools to, you know, do well in most phases. And I really, really think that the fact that they're so mobile and they have the, the recursion as well, um, there's really no stopping them. They They nailed that feeling of the endless hordes of Skaven. Yeah, as, as we said at the beginning, I really feel like this is the only one we've seen thus far that feels like they said, we're going to one-up what we used to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, that said, we've got so many more to cover, guys. Mm. And and we're not seeing the whole picture, even with the ones that we're unimpressed with. Spoiler alert, Gitz is my least favorite of the ones that they've done this far. Um, and But we don't know what the rest of that battle tome looks like. It could be that the rest of the Skaven, Skaven index is not that impressive. Yeah. So at this point, it's too early to say, and some people might call it toxic positivity, but I'm very much the kind of guy that wants to be optimistic, but realistic. And we just don't have enough information yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to start getting pessimistic until I have a good reason to be. Yeah. So I'm, and anyone that's feeling Skaven's overpowered right now, keep in mind, we don't know what the rest of your faction is going to do. And I have a lot of faith in Matt Rose. I think that's his name. Mm -hmm. He's doing a great job uh, leading this team. And yeah. uh, I, I, I'm very hopeful for what 4th edition is going to be. I agree. It's going to be good, guys. All right. You want to wrap us up, Jonas? Yeah. Um, so everyone, uh, please leave a comment uh, and like the video. It helps us get some notice from the algorithm. Uh, and if you want to talk to us uh, anymore, you can find us in the Discord, as Ryan mentioned, or obviously in the comments, as per usual. We, we're actually pretty good at replying to comments, I've, I've noticed. Uh, we usually get back to you guys in a day or two, so um, I, I'm actually quite proud of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and if, if you want to 
catch up on on other stuff for the faction focuses. We're doing the entire series, so if uh, if you're a little bit behind, check out the playlists on the right here, and then you can check out the other stuff. See you in the next one.